Hey everyone, so I just finished a webinar with John Ainsworth from Data Driven Marketing, and we talked about a process how authority site owners can take their website from double to 5x their monthly revenue through a process of course creation. So if you are a website owner and you're looking to increase your profits, or if you own a site and you're looking to hit your target exit, then this webinar can provide a lot of clarity in that regard as to what you can do within six to 12 months to hit those numbers. So on that note, hope you enjoy. Yeah, so uh, I run Data Driven Marketing. We um, have a couple of services. We work with people who either have course businesses already, so they've got a site with traffic and they're already selling courses, or people who've just got an authority site, affiliate site, niche site, something like that, that's got a lot of traffic, but they haven't got courses yet. And we work with those kind of two groups of people. I'm guessing there's many, many more of the, the second group here today. And what we do is we help people to make normally between kind of two and five times as much revenue through um, implementing course funnels and selling courses, whether that's as an affiliate or selling, uh, you know, making your own courses and selling those. And the reason that that's possible is because the economics of it just works so much better when you're selling courses and when you have a great funnel for selling those courses as well. And uh, we do it through a couple of ways. We have a done for you service, like an agency kind of thing where we do it for people. And we also have an option where we um, we coach people, like a, a done with you service, where we help support people to do it themselves. And obviously, that's like the cheaper option of doing it, you know. Um, and uh, yeah, we um, we've done that for like four kind of so years, help people make a lot of money, and and hopefully going to help some of the guys in the audience today help you guys make a lot more money. As yeah, well. absolutely. And I can say just as you're explaining how you're helping these content sites, when I'm thinking about all of the content sites that I've migrated uh, over the last couple of years, most of the authority sites, they, they don't do this. So uh, at least on the smaller side. So yes, this is definitely an area for improvement that I've seen repeatedly. So it's I'm, I'm happy to see that even though this is kind of a, I mean, this is not a completely new method. It's one that definitely still works for, for growing sites. Cool. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Well, why don't we get into this? So I'll let you get to the presentation and hopefully um, you'll allow me to ask some questions along the way, either just ones that I'm personally curious about, or if anyone from the audience has questions, maybe I'll be able to see those in time and I'll, I'll be able to ask those in between as well. Yeah, if you've got questions as we go, drop them into the chat and then either Nick's going to ask me at the end of each section as we go through it, or we'll do a Q&A session at the end and we'll go through a lot of stuff then as well. So uh, before we get started, I see somebody, I see Florian said not working for me, mobile Chrome, Safari, now browser Chrome. Are, are, is everyone able to hear this presentation okay or hear and see? I guess you... Yeah, if you can hear and see it fine, then please post in. Okay, all good for Grant and Doug and Thomas, Anissa, Richard. Okay, most people seem okay. to be fine. Uh, now that I, I think about it, anyone who can't hear or see this is probably not responding to the chat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, we will send out... A, but we know that a lot of... Right, people right. Uh, so we'll yeah. send out a, a recording of this after afterwards as well. So uh, yes, for anyone... Florian, especially uh, if you can't see her here. Uh, yeah, we'll get this to you. Okay, so yeah, sorry about that, John, go ahead. Yeah, no worries at all. We've got to make sure everybody can see it. So, all right, guys, what we're going to cover today is how to double your authority site revenue in under two months. And this is a pro that, so this is, um, I want to qualify it a little bit. This is not everybody, not every single person listening is going to be able to get that result. Pretty much everybody's going to be able to double revenue and probably more, but not necessarily in under two months. That's some very um, specific uh, things you need to have in place, but I'll explain exactly what they are as we go through. So let's crack on. The issues that I see with people who've got authority sites are your sites are hugely under monetized and you probably are not fully aware of just how much they are under monetized at the moment. Uh, I want to do a poll though, so let's start off with um, what Nick was talking about. What uh, do you own a site or are you looking to buy a site? I want to understand who's in the audience at the moment. So I'm going to share that poll and hopefully you can see that. It should be over on the right hand side if you're on the desktop next to the chat. And we see, oh, it's like a horse race in the politics, <laughs> isn't it? Own a site to keep is 
by far the biggest ones, 60 something percent, and then want to buy a site about 30 percent and own a site to sell is actually quite a small number of people. So wow. we've settled on own a site to keep 58, 59 percent and want to buy a site 30 percent. This is relevant to all of those groups, but it's just really helpful to me to understand um, who um, who's in the audience so I can make sure to turn the targets yeah. to you. So the reasons why people have um, the such an undermonetized site is because you're only monetizing through ads and affiliate links. Now, what happens in any given industry is it becomes a way of doing things and everybody follows the way that everybody else does things. And sometimes there's a better way and you don't realize it. It's just not kind of, uh, you're not conscious of it. And I want to try and open your eyes to what's possible. So if you're only monetizing through ads and affiliate links and you're not collecting emails at the moment, you're not collecting email addresses or you're collecting emails and not sending out email promotions, that is how come your site is hugely under monetized. Um, if you're not offering your own digital products or courses, that's another area that really is holding is, is um, reducing the amount of revenue you make. I don't want to say holding you back because you might choose not to do this, but I want you to understand what's possible. So what's the solutions? What can you do? Start collecting email addresses. I'm going to give you the overview, like the real high level overview in like five, uh, like a minute at the start, and then we'll go through in more detail. So start collecting email addresses. Start sending emails to the people who you collect the email addresses from uh, with useful content, maybe your blog posts, whatever you're publishing, and with promotion of different courses through affiliate links. Once you know what works, what people are going to buy, because you've been promoting other people's courses and you know what your audience is interested in, start selling your own info products and courses. So start making your own courses, your own info products, and then build your own course funnels for selling those things as well. So that is a way more profitable business model. It is more work, of course, but it is a lot more money that you make from every visitor you get from the traffic that you've currently got. So we've got this client and she came to me and she was making a few, she had ads, she had sponsorship, she had affiliate links, and she had a couple of courses and she was only making like a few grand a month from it. And she told me that she wanted to get to like 10 grand a month. And I, um, I laughed at her. I didn't mean to, but I did because I was just looking at the amount of traffic that she had and I was like, oh, you're not going to get to 10 grand a month. You're going to get to like at least 30. And I was wrong. In month one, she didn't get to 30 grand. She went to 50 grand. And then month two was 50 grand and month three was 60 a month. Four was about 70 or 80 and then she hit 100 last month. And it's like, there is some serious kind of money to be made in this if you've got a big audience already. So we're going to come back and uh, talk more about that later. So when I was trying to think of the name of the talk for today, I thought we'll go, we could go with something just really straightforward and explaining what you're going to get. So how to double your authority site revenue in under two months. And I thought, that's great. It's very descriptive. You know what you get from this. But I thought it's not very fun. I thought, could we have some more fun with this? So I thought, I'm going to show you a bunch of funnels and you don't have to show me yours. So I thought, maybe I'll call it, I'll show you mine and you don't have to show me yours. And I thought, ah, maybe that's too silly. Maybe that's just too childish, you know? So I was thinking about that TV show from the 90s. Do you remember this, Nick? You I, I do. I do. Exhibit was the man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they had that show, right? And they would take these cars and they'd pimp them up. And so I thought maybe instead of pimp my ride, what we could do today is pimp my funnel. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to show you how to pimp up your funnel in order to make more money from it. So who is this for? We've covered this a little bit already, but I want to really make sure you understand so you can make sure you're in the right place. You've got an authority site or an affiliate site that's got traffic already. You're already making money from it through the affiliate links from ads. People love your content. And you might be thinking to yourself, I've heard about this course idea that you can sell digital products and that can make more money, but I don't know if that's right for me. You might never have thought about that before. Um, and whichever, if that's you, that's totally normal. That's most people who own authority sites, are, you know, have not really looked into this that much. So my goal today is there's all this money that's on the table that is available to you and you're currently walking away and leaving it. So I want you to realize the money is there so you can stop walking away from it. That's the basic goal and give you an overview of what the process is. We're not going to go into tons of detail about exactly how to do every step, but I want to show you the basic concept of it. Um, Aishuna's asked what's benchmark for a big audience. So I would say for, for doing this, you'd need to have at least, uh, for this to be the, the right thing to work on, you need to have at least 10,000 
uh, page views a month, I would say. If you haven't, then probably focus on growing the traffic first. Um, I'm going to link to some resources at the end, and we've got some other resources, some handouts we're going to give out throughout the talk as well. So there's going to be some um, stuff you can have available for afterwards. Now, I talked about funnels so far. Now, what the fuck is a funnel? What is that? Um, this is the way it's normally visualized. If you look on a blog post about sales funnels, this is how they're shown. And the basic concept is you have traffic at the top and then the next layer down is people who get onto your email list and then people who go to the sales page the checkout page and then people who become repeat customers and you narrow you focus it down you you manage to get mon lovely money coming out of the bottom in my experience most funnels that people do have are more like this and there's just money pissing out of it left right and center and it's like really really inefficient and people are losing a lot of money now, sticking with the pimp my funnel idea, what we're going to do is we're going to take a classic car and we're going to pimp it up throughout the course of the presentation. So this is a 1958 Cadillac DeVille that needs a little bit of love and attention, and we're going to be pimping it up as we go on. So what we know is there's you want to make more money, but there's about a thousand things that you could do. Right? There's tons of stuff that you could do. You could work on improving your content. You could hire more writers. You could do more link building. You could look for a different ad network, et cetera, et cetera. Right? Now, within the course space, even, there's tons and tons of things that you can do under the funnel heading. You can do webinars, and you can do sideways sales letters, and video sales letters, and all different kinds of things. So how do you know what to do? What I'm going to do is talk you through the system that we use. What we've done is we've looked for what is the 20% of effort that gets the 80% of the results. And this is very, very much based on data. As Nick said, my business is called Data Driven Marketing. And what we, are, what we do is we track for every single initiative that we run for any client. We track what did we do, how long did it take, what results did it get. And so we're at the end of that able to refine it and say this is the thing that gets the best results. This is next best. This is next best. This is the order to do them in. And that's what I've got for you today. So what are the ones that work? This is like just a little overview of the model overall that works for selling courses, and then I'm gonna dive into, well, if you don't have courses yet, if you're running an authority site, where do you start, what order do you do, do you do it in, so it'll be nice and clear. So there's three main problems that people who are running this kind of business have. Their email list is too small, they have too low of a revenue per sale, and they're not making enough sales. So what we wanna do is grow a nice big email list, make high revenue per sale, and make lots of sales to the email list. That's the basic concept. If you do that, you make a lot of money. It's not. There's lots of details, but it's not overall more complicated than that. So these are the steps to do, and they're in order if you've got an authority site of what you should do. So start collecting emails. So at the moment, you might have a newsletter people can sign up for. You might have a lead magnet on the site. You might not. A lot of authority sites don't. So start putting up a lead magnet, which is like a free resource someone gets if they sign up for your newsletter and put opt-in forms on your website. So let me talk you through a little bit about it. Most sites have got an opt-in rate of about 0.5 to 1%. So of 100 visitors, maybe one of them will opt-in. It's possible for most people to get to about a 5% opt-in rate. So that's like five to 10 times bigger than what they're currently at. The best we've ever managed with any client was 9.3%. This is the site Paintable. Um, if you go to paintable.cc, you will see it. And as you go through the site, you'll see all these kind of um, little adverts for signing up for their free lead magnet throughout the site. And uh, they're in the blog post, they're on the home page, they're in the sidebar, they're all over the place on the site and that gets people to sign up. Now, if you're currently making money from ads, this is gonna take up some of the same spaces as the ads do. So you're not going to want to replace all of your ads with signing up for this because that'd be madness and you lose all of the money. So choose somewhere, one spot that you're going to put it. Maybe it's on the home page. Maybe it's like one of the spots within the blog posts. Maybe it's a sidebar and start collecting some email addresses so that the next steps you're going to be able to test them out. What we're generally seeing here is an increase in opt-ins of two to five times. That's kind of the average range. Best we've ever seen was 50 times increase from one of our clients. And John, what, so what the determines that? They went from, what, yeah. what have you seen determines the, the difference Amount here? Of, yeah. So the reason it's, um, there's a few things. So what niche somebody's in, uh, different in certain niches, more people are willing to sign up. 
or less people are. Um, the increase could be caused because someone's got something awful in place and we replace it with something good versus if they've got something good and we replace it with something, you know, better then the increase from terrible to, to very good is obviously bigger than from good to very good. Um, with this client, the reason they went up 50 times was because they also had a big social media following. So they had a big okay. YouTube audience, a big Instagram following, um, Facebook, and they weren't ever mentioning the lead magnet in those places either. So what happened was they were getting 100 opt-ins. We got them up to about 800 through their SEO traffic. And then we started promoting the lead magnet on Instagram as well. And they got them up to 5,000-ish a week. Got it. Cool. Thank you. So once you have an email list, once you've started to build up an email list from your traffic, start sending regular email promotions, promoting courses as an affiliate. So this is the step. If you've already got a big email list you've been collecting and you haven't been making money from promoting stuff to them, the money is in the list. So this is the step where you can actually double your revenue in a couple of months for some of you. If you've already got a site, it's already got um, an audience, it's already got an email list, you've already been collecting that, but you're not making money from the email list. This is the place where the money is stored in these kinds of businesses. So if you start promoting courses as an affiliate, you can start making money from that. And there's two things that happen here. One, you make some money from it. Um, two, you learn what kind of courses your audience are interested in buying. And when you're sending out these kind of email promotions, then you can often, from the person who you're an affiliate for, get emails for sending out. They've already pre-written emails for promoting their course, which might be pretty good. And then you can tweak them yourself and personalize them, what have you. And that way, there's a, not all that much work involved in doing that. And obviously, they then get the customer and they get the revenue long term. And this is just a way of testing the waters in order to get into the real money, which is selling your own courses. But um, but you get to learn, you know, oh, that topic worked really well for my audience and this one didn't. Now, I want to talk you through a couple of steps of what you can do here um, in order to figure this out. So once you've got the email list, you can even you can do a survey first and say these are the topics I think you guys might want uh, to buy courses, you know, be interested in courses around or what your biggest frustrations might be and then list them out in the survey and then put an other option for people to fill in as well and use that as a way to pre-filter and start to get a little bit more accurate as to what courses are likely to sell and then start selling um, these courses as an affiliate. And somebody's asked, what's the best course affiliate programs? I mean, there's a whole bunch of stuff out that you can use like ClickBank to find um, places where people are uh, running affiliate programs. But what you can also do is just search in your niche and see who is it who is selling courses about that topic and ask them if they run, you know, message them. Do you run an affiliate program? I've got a high traffic site. I've got an email list. I'd like to promote your courses. Um, and I think that's quite a solid way of doing it as well. So ClickBank and then just direct messaging people. Um, I'll come back to your other question there, Heloise, later. Now, overall, the money is in the list. And very, very, very few people understand this. And it's so unbelievably true. Like the people who are running businesses that are making really good money from their from their audience this is what they're doing. They're using email marketing in order to make money from it. And it is just enormously more profitable than people just coming to the site and deciding to buy something straight away because you get the chance to build a relationship with them and then these people will buy and they'll often buy multiple times. So I learned this first of all from this guy, Tom Sears, a good friend of mine now. And he runs a course about uh, bass guitar. It's called, uh, sorry, blues guitar, blues guitar master. And he would collect email addresses, he'd run ads to it as well, but he also had his own organic traffic and he would collect people's email addresses and then send out email promotions twice a month. And he was just making tens of thousands of dollars just from the from those email promotions. He had like, I don't know, six or ten courses, something like that. And he was um he was promoting them uh via email promotions and just every month. People would come and just buy his courses from the email promotions. He used the, reused the same emails every every six months, something like that. And um, I was like, this is amazing, the, the, how well it worked and the amount of money he was making from it. Now, why, if you've got an email list, why would you not do this? I hear the same things again and again and again. People don't want to annoy their subscribers. They don't want their subscribers to be annoyed by getting too many emails and unsubscribing. So the trick here 
is to send good email promotions that people actually like receiving. It's not just go buy my course, it's on sale. You send out relevant, useful content, um, first of all about the topic, and then you send out uh, content that is useful and promotional all in one. And um, if we get to the Q&A later and people want to know about like, what does that look like? I'll share some templates and examples and kind of swipe files of those kind of things. We haven't got time to get into the details in the main session today but you can send out good emails that people actually like receiving. So this is a friend of mine, Shona. She runs Perfect English Grammar and she used email marketing to about double her revenue. And uh, she was running a site, Perfect English Grammar, I think it's perfect-english-grammar.com, a high traffic site. And she hadn't been sending out email promotions and started doing it and about doubled her revenue from doing that. And um, it's just, I mean, honestly, it's such a big deal. Now her, her revenue is way up because she's implemented more tactics as well. So what we've done now, I feel, is we've taken our Cadillac Deville and we have started to pimp it up. We've uh, put some leather seats in. We've given it a new lick of paint. We've given it some beautiful alloy wheels and we're really starting to, uh, to cook with gas here. Nick, I realized I got a bit carried away and just no, that was great. there. Do you got any questions about stuff? That was great. Um, I, I did have one question just about the courses that people create. Mm -hmm. Do are a lot of these do a lot yeah. of these uh, these site owners do they have to become that uh, like personal brand, very public figure to create these courses themselves, or do you have clients that maybe create courses? Uh, like other people create the courses for them or they don't necessarily have to adopt that persona and be that that face for the course? Yeah, it's um, a really, really important question because it's one of the reasons why people get stuck with course businesses and they're sometimes hard to sell is because they've made themselves the, the face of the brand and it's like really tricky from there. You don't have to. Um, you don't have to be the one creating the courses. You don't, because you might own a site and not be the subject matter expert. You might have other people writing blog posts, right? Well, you also don't have to be the subject matter expert to create a course. You can, you know, you can hire somebody, you can pay somebody to be that person and to and work with them to, um, to actually put that course together and they can be the presenter of it. You know, then you'll have to, you know, figure out for them how much, how much does their time cost and that's going to very niche to niche as to what that is, but you can get people who are amiable, friendly, good on camera. They don't have to know anything about course creation and learning outcomes and that kind of stuff themselves. And certainly don't have to know anything about SEO to be a good, um, to be good content. You need someone who's a subject matter expert for that. And I'm actually going to talk through, give an overview of like, what's the steps to work through when you're kind of putting that together. I saw that Heloise has asked average cost and time commitment to launch your own course. Um, I would say we're looking, you're looking, people overcomplicate this sometimes. I'd say we're looking at about a month for putting um, a course together, depending on the length of it and the, um, and the topic you're in. Cool. Thank you. So the next step is build the course, right? So I've got a few steps here for you of like what actually needs to be in place. So the benefits of doing this, right, as opposed to selling stuff as an affiliate, is you get to keep 100% of the revenue that you that is made from doing the promotion. So you get to keep more of it and you make more money long term as well. So if you sell somebody else's course, then the person who's bought from them now is on their list and will, has bought one course from them and is more likely to buy some other course from them in the future. And you don't get that long term customer lifetime revenue. And so if you make a course or you make multiple courses in your topic, you get to sell multiple times to these same people. And someone who's bought from you once is about 20 times more likely to buy from you again from the data, the, the data we've collected on it. So if you're the subject matter expert, you can choose to do this yourself or you can, you don't have to, even then you can choose to get somebody else in who's going to be the, the person in the course. If you're not the subject matter expert, definitely partner with somebody on it. So create the outline. I would say we're looking at about a week. You want to figure out, you know, what is it that um, I'm not a, I'm not a course creation expert. I have created courses myself that I do sell, but I'm, that's not like my area of expertise that I really teach people about. This is more about the structure and the funnels, but I'll give you like the steps that we work through. So create the outline, like what topics need covering? What do you need someone to be able to do at the end of it? What do you need the learning outcomes to be? What do you need them to be able to understand at the end of the course and then go do? 
Um, so do a version one, do a brain dump on that, either on your own or with the subject matter expert. And make sure this is like targeted. You know, don't just try and teach everything. Choose one specific area that you've identified through promoting other people's courses. Create that outline in like a day and then go back and refine it, refine it over the course of maybe two to three days, maybe a week. Then record the course. So once you've got the outline, you know what's going to be covered in each of the modules. You go through and um, actually record the course. It does not need to be enormously time consuming. The thing that takes time is learning to be an expert in a topic. And be okay and be good at explaining it The actually recording the course is not taking an enormous amount of time we sell a course and we have a coaching program about this area and we recorded the course in i would say whole thing in probably a week to 10 days something like that and we get great feedback on it people love it it gets really you know really solid feedback we've refined it and tweaked it since but a lot of the original content is still in there from a year ago when we did that um, does not have to be enormously time consuming Next step, get somebody else to edit it, you know, put in any intro uh, slides you want in there and, um, you know, cut out any of the dead time, the ums, the ahs, that kind of thing. Um, get someone to edit it, upload it to course software. There's loads of great course software out there. Kajabi, Teachable, Thinkific, they're all really good. There's various different ones. You can use Simplero is good as well. It doesn't matter too much what one. They're all, they're all pretty good. And then launch it. Now, uh, like I said, um, the launch, the email promotions, um, I'm going to be happy to talk about more detail in the Q&A. It's like what goes in those emails, how do you send them out? But the basic concept is you send out a week's worth of useful content about that particular topic, and then you have a week of promotion. And you have a discount when the promotion is on. And then at the end of the promotion, then the price goes back up to the previous amount. The discount is normally 30 to 50%. 50% might be the launch price, 30% when you're doing other promotions. Um, that's the basic concept of it. And I can explain like what goes in those emails later on. Now, um, I'm going to go into some stuff that's probably like way more advanced than this. This is like months down the road of the, before you would get this, but I'll get to this. But I want to give you the overview of what's possible if you work on this, if you decide to take this approach. So the next thing is order bumps. And I learned about this from Christopher Sutton, who runs Musical U, which is a, a course business about musicality. And um, it's I learned it from him, but the concept is not... It's not terribly unique. It's just not done a lot in the course space. So Amazon does this, and I'll explain what it is. If you go to Amazon, you put a book into your basket, like this one, Property Investment for Beginners. Then on the next page, they're gonna tell you these other books are available. You might want to also buy this. And that is the basic concept of uh, an order bump. Something else somebody might want to buy as they're checking out. If you go to McDonald's and you say, I want a Big Mac, they'll say, do you want fries with that? That's their order bump. If you go to the cinema and you buy a cinema ticket, then they're going to offer you some popcorn. It's like the extra thing that goes with it that's actually probably more profitable. So if you've got a, um, if you're at the stage where you've got your course and you're selling it and you've got your sales page, your order page, and your thank you page, this goes on the order page. This is where the order bump fits. And this is what it looks like. So someone's putting their credit card details in and there's also the option to buy something else. So it says here, Yes, I want access for only $19 extra, one-time offer. I'd like to get over-the-shoulder videos to walk me through every single step of the passive profit system for only $19 extra. And they tick that box and it adds $19 to um, their checkout price. That's the basic concept. Could look like this, where it's got a little um, tick box at the bottom and it's in gray. It could be that there's a slider, but it's they're all basically the same. That is an order bump. It's on the checkout page. Now that adds about 10 to 20% to your revenue, to your total course revenue. It's not a new idea. It's been around for thousands of years. People sell things and they sell something else you might want to get. You go to the supermarket, there's chocolate bars by the checkout. It's that kind of idea. Increase in revenue, 15 to 20%, something in that ballpark. So if you're selling a $99 course and you make $10,000 from a promotion, then 40 to 60% of people will buy the order bump. If it's $37 and 60% of people buy it, that means you make an additional $2,200. So that would be 22% extra. This is a client of ours. He went through our Done With You coaching program. His name is David Vignola, and he sells courses about home recording studios. And uh, he implemented this in, uh, he already had courses, he was already making sales, 
and he implemented this in about a day for 15 different courses he was selling and it meant his revenue went up about 20 percent so it's not a hard thing to do but most people in the space don't do it so then what's next yeah sorry nick yeah i wanted to questions oh, okay. <laughs> uh, so for the you just mentioned that this site owner he spent about a day to create the upsell uh or the order bump i'm sorry it should is that typically how much i guess time or resources people should be spending on on the order bump i know you said 15 to 20 percent increase in revenue which could be pretty big for some people should people be spending a lot of time to create yeah. these order bumps so that was to set up the order bump. So what he did is he already had a bunch of products. Okay, got set. it. Um, and so what he did is he just took existing products that he had and chose all of one of those as the order bump to go with each course. So he's selling a course on um, how to set up your home recording studio. Then his order bump might be uh, get the course on how to master mixing, something like ah, that. Okay. You know, that's the kind of idea. So he already had them. the one thing that took a day was technically going into Kajabi in his case and s uploading the product to the right place, turning order bump on, writing in the text that goes with it. To kind Got of it. it. OK, so in that case, that was a, a separate course altogether. So this is an option for people who maybe have, have a library of courses, maybe a small group of courses, and they can just kind of use each course to, to uh, order bump with the other courses, assuming they're re relevant to each other. Yeah, oh, exactly. Okay. Yeah. And like, if you're, you know, listening to this and thinking, well, I haven't got any courses at the moment. This is just all theoretical. It's like, yeah, this is way down the line, right? This is like months into the whole process. What I'm trying to do is lay out, if you decide to go down this route, then over the course of a year, this is all the stuff that you might do, which could lead to you doubling your revenue so that you can make an informed decision. Are you going to do this? Is this something that you want to implement? And um, yeah, that's the basic, that's kind of basic. Cool. Got it. All right, next step would then be set, setting up upsells. So the idea of upsells is kind of similar to order bumps. Imagine you go to Starbucks, they will sell you a totally regular normal cafe, uh, coffee, or you can buy a super fancy coffee with you know caramel and nuts and whatever else on top, or you can buy a $100 super giant ridiculous coffee. You know, they'll always let you spend more money. That's the kind of idea of an upsell, give people something else more expensive they can buy. So this is Shona, I mentioned her before from Perfect English Grammar, and she set this up on her site. She was um, hanging out with me in the bar in central London called the uh, Royal Academy of the Arts. And um, well, the bar's not called that, the, that's the, um, the venue it's in. And we sat around and I was explaining this idea and she was like, oh, that sounds cool. So she went home that night and set up an upsell for a promotion she had coming up. And she made an extra $1,500 the next day from having this upsell in place. So what would this look like? Where does this fit into the funnel? We've talked about the order bump, which is on the order page. This upsell is on the upsell page, which comes after the order page. So someone puts their credit card details in, they hit submit, their sale goes through, and they're shown their confirmation page saying, would you like to buy this additional course? It's got 30% off if you buy it now. And what well, the first thing you say is thanks so much for your sale. Um, you know, thanks so, so, thanks so much for buying from us. Um, the course is going to be on its way to you by email. You know, you're going to be delighted with it. And then you say, and we've also got the special one time offer for you as well. So it's a separate page. And on that page, you have a button that says, um, yes, add to cart. And if they click that, they don't have to put their credit card details in again. The whole thing just goes through. So I'll show you an example. This is a client of ours, Teal Swan. Um, this is the confirmation page. Before you access the vault, add the self-love course for 61% off. And then it's a regular sales page and they can click this button. Yes, add to my order. Now, how much more money is that gonna make? That's an, another additional 10 to 20% on top. So if you're selling a $99 course, you make $10,000 from a promotion, the $99 upsell, so it's another course also for $99, 20% of people might buy it. That means you make an additional $2,000. So that would be 2,000, that'd be 20% extra. David that I mentioned before, he implemented these upsells as well. That gave him an addition. It took him like, he already had the courses. So, and I get that that's not the position that everybody's in, but that made him an additional 20% from just setting that up as well. 
So his average revenue went up somewhere between 30 to 50 percent and it took him three days work. Um, so that's the concept of the upsells. Nick, any questions? Uh, I, so I guess I kind of saw it. I was, I was thinking initially, what's the difference between the order bump and the upsell? It sounds like it could also be a course, but more, I guess the real differentiating factor is that this happens after the initial transaction goes through already. So you're, I guess you're not really risking um, turning off certain customers by bombarding them with too many orders, uh, too many, I guess, order bumps at once. And this is meant to just be a kind of like a, an order bump version two after the first transaction. Is that kind of how, the right way, right way of looking at it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. All right. So the next thing, um, Heloise has asked, how do you approach determining price for your course? So um, in the um, hobby space, or you know, if you're looking at language learning, learning music, training your dog, something like that, normally between about $79 and $200. That's the kind of price range that people are happy to pay. If you're in the finance space, people will spend a lot more on an, an investment course, something like that. And if you're so could easily be, you know, five hundred to fifteen hundred dollars. And if you're in the B two B space, it's kind of similar. If you're in, you know, um, teaching people about Google Ads for shopping, for example, um, then that's going to be a more expensive kind of course, five hundred thousand dollars, something in that kind of ballpark. But also, you need to look at your competitors, see what they're spending, what they're charging, um, and start testing things. Mostly, people charge too little for courses, and actually, if you charge more, you'll get slightly less sales, but you'll overall make a lot more money. Yeah, I was thinking about that. If you start out with, let's say you're working with the other uh, affiliate partners, then you can just use that information to determine your pricing strategy, whether you want to match that or make it higher value and a little bit less expensive or uh, create a more premium version of your competitor's products and price it higher, like you said. Yeah, yeah, cool. absolutely. Yeah. All right, so the next thing then you can start to do is improve the checkout experience. And what happens here is a lot of people are falling at the last hurdle and they've got this leaky bucket, the leaky funnel that we talked about before. And what happens is someone gets to the checkout page and people are busy. They've got all kinds of stuff going on in their life. So don't make it hard for them to buy from you. What people do here, sometimes they'll ask for someone's address when they don't need it, ask them to set up a password that's not needed, all kinds of things. And we want to make it simple and straightforward, make it just go straight from A to B, make it really easy. This was a, the, the second thing you need to do is you need to make people feel comfortable buying from you. And so this is a client's uh, checkout page that they had before. And it's simple and straightforward, it doesn't ask for too much information, but it's not very reassuring. So the version that we then did was this, and it had lots of testimonials on there. It had a picture of the guy who created it and a picture of the the course on different screens. It's got a guarantee on this page down here, nice and big, saying if you don't like it, get your money back. More testimonials, making sure they understand, yes, if you buy this course, you are going to get the result that you're after. And that led to, we did this across lots of different checkout pages for him. It led to an increase in conversion rate of 30 to 500% across the different, uh, for different uh, checkout pages, which is enormous, right? You know, so that's another step that's possible. Um, Dan has asked, my affiliate site diverts the customer from my site to Amazon or affiliates where the transaction gets completed. Don't control that part of the transaction to upsell offer courses. Yeah, so you can't do this until you're selling your own courses. That's why I was saying about making your own courses earlier. Most other people are doing a bad job of this. So when you're promoting stuff as an affiliate, you are subject to their checkout pages that aren't as good um, and you don't get to keep the customer. So this is a step after you start creating courses. All right. Um, Nick, any questions? Uh, no, I think that... Oh, okay. So actually, one question. So this does seem like a huge potential increase. Like I think you said it was five, 50 to 500%. So 30 to 500. Yeah. I mean, it's a huge range, right? Huge range, depending how bad your checkout page is. Right. To so, with. I mean, I guess you, this is kind of like step seven or, or step six. Yeah. Um, when, yep. Step, step six. six right, yeah. So yeah. should this be one of the 
earlier things that somebody does, like say they, they don't even want to do the order bump or maybe before the order bumps and upsells, should they be focusing on improving the order page uh, a little bit earlier? Or is that, or when's the best time, I guess, to improve the order page? Yeah, I see your point. Yeah, and if you haven't got products yet created that you could use as order bumps and upsells, maybe you would do work on the sales page and the checkout page before you then go in and think about adding them in. Because if you have to create the product, that's then time consuming. Um, this is the the order that I've shown here is the order, for, I guess, for people, the order bumps and upsells first is for people who've got multiple products. So yes, if you haven't got multiple products, I would do the checkout page and products okay. first. Cool. Yes. All right, so then I'm really, this is really getting way down the road, like months and months and months out. So I just want to kind of show you that there are then other steps that allow you to continue to improve this, like improving the offer, giving better bonuses and guarantees, optimizing the sales page, setting up a tripwire funnel, which is a funnel that sits behind your lead magnet, and then you make revenue from people when they first sign up. There's all these different steps you can get in place. We are talking probably like a year down the road by the time you get to this. But all of these things allow you to um, continue to increase revenue. What we have done now is we have said, right, we're going to take your authority site and we are going to put nitroglycerin in it. We're going to have the exhaust catch on fire. It's going to drive at 200 miles an hour. We're going to, um, oh, it doesn't show in the uh, in the PDF version we've uploaded here, but this is one of those low riders. It's like, you know, bouncing up and down and like really we have pimped this thing up and we are seeing massive, massive increases in, in revenue that people are making with doing these kinds of things. And we started working ourselves with authority sites uh, directly um, a number of months ago and are now starting to see, even if they didn't have courses, we're starting to see them making these kind of in, uh, big increases in revenue. We're planning next year on coming back to Nick and Empire Flippers and start buying our own sites to do this ourselves instead of just doing it for others. Because we're like, man, we need to, you know, we need to get in on some of the, um, the, the long term profits here. Um, so. What I want to do is talk to you about how much more money you could make. This has been theoretical. Let's try and make it practical for your site. And so what we've got right now is I want to give you the chance to go and figure that out or to, to start to find out the answer. We offer at Data Driven Marketing a personalized profit report completely free to help you know for your business, for your site, how much more money you could make. So if you fill this in, we're going to help you to figure that out. And the place to find that out is at pimpyourfunnel.com. Um, so if you go there, there is a short survey. It's like 10, 12 questions, something like that. Um, you fit in like, you know, what's your traffic? Do you have courses already? Um, what's your email list size? This kind of thing. And at the end of that, it's going to say, thank you very much for filling that in. And someone in my team within two or three days will have gone through and um, figured out for you about, you know, an estimate of how much more revenue you could be making. And if you are a good fit to work with us, which is not everybody, if you've got enough traffic and you're in the, you know, um, that's the biggest thing probably if you've got enough traffic, then you'll get an email with details of how to book a call to talk to us about it. We help people to do this based on an, a percentage of increase in revenue. So if we, do, if you don't make any more money, you don't pay us anything for doing it. Um, so we'll be, we're really, really selective about who we work with. So that's kind of the first step. Once you've got that answer to that, then um, this is how the, the page looks when you get there. Um, once you get that answer, Nick, you had an idea, didn't you, about then what people? Yeah, do so that. we were. So I'll leave a, a link in the chat as well. So I was thinking it's it could be really cool if you wanted to first go to pimp my funnel, uh, pimpyourfunnel dot com, pimpyourfunnel dot com. Sorry, and to see how much you could possibly yeah. generate by making these changes, and then going to the Empire Flippers valuation tool. If you want to, you don't, I mean, if you just want to know what the valuation of your business could look like given those numbers. So uh, I, I know we only have uh, a relatively lower percentage of people who want to sell their site right now, but I, th I think the important thing to understand is whether you want to exit your site or not, the, the end point is still the same. You still want to make a highly profitable website that has systems in place that don't that require it to operate more or less without without you to to have a full time job. So I think it's uh, and then a lot of people they don't expect to exit, but then in the future they're 
glad that they made these changes uh, and, and that they've built something that can exit. Um, so yeah, I think it's a cool combination to first go to pimpyourfunnel.com, see how much you can make, and then enter that, uh, that, that profit figure into the valuation tool. Boom. So this is what that looks like. It's empireflippers.com slash valuation dash tool. The link is in the chat as well. Uh, you go there, and then I think you choose... Uh, so probably it? display it's advertising. Info in, product? Well, or? I mean, I guess it depends. Okay. So you can choose display advertising. Some people probably have sites that are monetized by uh, Amazon Associates or affiliates. So those are the first two options. Could be a combination of all okay. three. So you can just choose whichever one you, you are currently monetizing with, or if you have a percentage of it monetizing through display advertising, it's fine to choose that. And then it's going to take you to this page after that. Yep. So I want to just give you an idea of like, this is all nice. This isn't something that we came up with. This is something we discovered by going and researching what were the big boys doing? What, the, what were the people who had those seven, eight, nine figure businesses? What were they doing and looking at that going behind the scenes? I was lucky enough to be able to do that. And we looked at it, collected all the data and said, right, this is something that we can take and apply um, and help people to grow their smaller businesses. So Mind Valley, if you've come across them, they do this. Digital Marketer, Tony Robbins, very, very much this is the system that he's using for selling his courses. Lady Boss, Grant Cardone and Russell Brunson, so kind of marketing guru types. Michael Heyer, Social Media Examiner, uh, Evan Pagan, Sam Ovens, who um, sells courses about uh, running group coaching programs. Um, Anna Rover, if it fits your macros, like this is the system that is used by a lot of people who've got these much bigger, you know, um, more profitable businesses. Um, Asian efficiency. So now what happens is when I show this whole system, right, there's two reactions that I generally get. First, people say this sounds amazing. And secondly, people say this looks like a lot of work. Now, the reason that it looks like a lot of work is because it's a lot of work. So if you worked on it, could you do it? Like, of course, of course, this is possible. Of course, you could do it, right? You're a badass. You can make this shit happen. If it made you two times the revenue, if it makes your site worth two times as much or whatever number you get back uh, when you go to pimpyourfunnel.com, would it be worth it? And that's a question for you to figure out. Like, you don't have to do this. I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to force this down your throat. I'm trying to show you the opportunity that is there so that you can make the decision of like, yeah, man, I totally want this. I want a system where if the Amazon affiliate uh, program cuts their percentage again, then I'm still going to be all right because I've got my own thing in place. If I lose my SEO traffic, I'm going to be all right because I've got my email list that's making the money. I'm making twice as much money. I can sell the site for way more. Like That's pretty badass, um, but it is a whole bunch more work and you've got to make that decision for yourself. Um, give you some overall numbers. So David, he went from making about 5,000 a month to a bit under 10,000, like looks like about eight and a half a month from this. Um, Dennis from Store Growers went from making about two and a half, 3,000 ish a month to just under 10,000. Um, he then introduced a group coaching program as well and went to about 20,000 a month. Um, got a client in the spirituality space. They've got a really big audience. They went from making about 20,000, 25,000 ish, it looks like a month to making about 100, 120. Um, for them, the jump was so big because they uh, also weren't collecting the email addresses. I mentioned them before. Um, so as they grew their email list and implemented the rest of the system, then their revenue went up. And Is that a monthly figure? Client. Yeah, that's that's money. Got it. Up. Yeah, that's that's awesome. But one thing I wanted to point out is so for valuations, you can kind of look at it like you take the monthly profit that you're making and multiply that by uh, the valuation multiple. Typically, that's going to be between 30 to 50 X right now. It can it can vary depending on the attributes of your business. So when you're looking at this, uh, let's just say for a business making one hundred thousand dollars. Uh, that's if if that is the average monthly revenue. Let's just say that's profit. That's a three million dollar business, or maybe a five million dollar business, depending on the valuation multiple again. But that's kind of how you should be looking at this, even if you're not planning to exit. This is uh, it, you're not only keeping this level of profit, but you have an asset that could be potentially life changing as an exit. 
last example, I think this is a client who had a big, she actually had a big YouTube channel rather than an authority site. And she went from making an average month was probably about 3000 ish. So she had a couple of like really good ones here, like 35 ish, something like that. And she jumped up, like I said before, to like 50 ish, 70. Uh, she's had some bad months in this as well, where she actually went up and hit nearly just tantalizingly close to a hundred thousand in a month. Um, so uh, really, really huge increase for her because she had a really big audience and the big audience is the thing. If you've already got a site with big audience, you are potentially sitting on a gold mine here. Um, thank you so much for coming and attending and listening and um, uh, paying attention. The site to go to is pimpyourfunnel.com. Please make sure to go there, fill it out, and we will. It's a completely personalized report. Someone in my team sits down, goes through, figures it out, and sends you back the details about it. Um, and we now have got, I think, time for Q and A. Yeah, so we have a, have a few Maybe minutes for some Q and A. I see we have one question here from. Latif, Latif. The range of cost to create the course start to finish, not the subject matter expert. So Latif, it's going to depend how much it's going to cost you to hire the person who is a subject matter expert, who you think is going to be um, good enough to be on camera and good at explaining things and uh, a good enough subject matter expert as well. So that's going to vary. Let's say it's in, uh, I don't know, carpentry versus in uh, Google ads, the, the range is going to be enormous. You know, the carpenter, the good carpenter who can explain things looks good on camera is going to probably cost you a lot, lot less than a consultant in, in Google ads. So I don't know the answer, but that's how you'd calculate it. And you need to figure out, okay, I need to have this much of their time to go through and actually put the outline together. Food blog. Okay, it might depend, do you need a nutritionist? Or do you need someone who's like a decent chef? Yeah. You know, so that's the kind of calculations you're going to have to do on that one. Um, but yeah, those are the steps you need to go through. You have to create the outline. You have to actually record the course. And you're looking at probably a week for creating the, um, recording the course. And I would say for creating the outline, it's of their time a few days. It, the first time you do it, maybe, I don't know, maybe you, you don't manage to completely nail it. I'm not, like I said, I'm not the absolute expert in creating courses. We've created them ourselves and I've, talk to a lot of experts, but I'm, that is not what I consult on actually creating the course. We have someone within our coaching program who helps people specifically with that, who is like, that's her, that's her shtick, that's her gig, you know. Um, I, I know that's not a very precise answer, but hopefully it's useful. Awesome. And we have uh, another question. Uh, Heloise asks, is there, are there any cases where courses did not have an impact on revenue? And are there any learnings from that? Oh, what an interesting question. Um, I don't think so. What would be the learnings? So the times when this, okay, learnings are, the times when this is not worth doing or it's less worth doing is when your traffic is low. Because if you've got a big, big audience, then the amount of money you can make from this is much, much larger. If you've only got 5,000 website visitors a month at the moment, just, just focus on growing the traffic and focus on the ads and affiliate and like, and then at some point start collecting email addresses and then gradually work up because the amount of money you'll make from it is relatively low and it's still a lot of work to do. Um, we work with people who have um, over 100,000 visitors a month um, in our program, in our coaching program. When I said we do it on a, you know, people only pay us if they make more money. Um, because that's for us to put the time in, that's kind of the cutoff of where it's worth it. Uh, so that's one part of it. Other things, I mean, that's part of the point of the process is as you go through and you start collecting emails and then sending promotions of other people's courses, if nobody buys them and you try a bunch of different angles, a bunch of different courses, a bunch of different topics and no one buys, don't proceed to the next step and make a course. If people are buying them like hotcakes and you're like, oh my God, I'm, uh, I'm making good money, but I'm also sending customers to, to these other people, then great, go make the course. So that's part of the point is test it out at each stage before you commit to the next step. Um, Richard's asked, any advice on how to make my email promotion stand out from spammy emails a customer may be receiving? Keep it simple or try and draw the reader in. Yeah, try and draw the reader in. That's the angle to use. I said I was going to share some stuff around... Um, let me see. How do I share these? So I've created for you a couple of different resources. Uh, I might be able One to. Is... 
Oh, can you share? Let's this? see. Uh, share now. Okay. Uh, All right. So this is about lead magnets and sales pages that I've got some resources for you guys on, and I want to find you some example emails of ones that worked really, really well. Um, so this is stuff that we've created for. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, these are emails that we've created for uh, clients um, for selling their courses. And the overall idea, what we're trying to do is provide a ton of value in the emails and move people towards the sale. So that if they don't buy from you this time, they still love getting the emails. That's the concept of what we're trying to do. Not the easiest thing to do, but if you have the right framework and the right um, examples to look at, it's not that difficult. So if you just had to start from scratch with a blank page, that's not easy to do. But if you have the, the, the framework and you know what to work within, then it's not too it's not too bad. So what I'm doing here is finding my um, module from our course about email promotions. And I'm going to download the email template. I'm going to share that with you guys. Yeah, that's good to know what works like in modern times, I guess. I, I've seen how, like I think Ryan Dice from Digital Marketer had a specific uh, email flow and it worked, I guess, I don't know how it's working now, but I, I, it worked before, but then that sequence, some people were really turned off by some of those emails, just how, hmm, like some people were in yeah, I'd say that's fair. Digital marketer has a very aggressive style yeah. in their um, in a lot of their uh, promotional emails. They really, really do. They've kind of taken these concepts and pushed it quite to an extreme. And part of the reason for that is when you're marketing to marketers, I believe you can do a slightly more exaggerated version because they've all seen all the regular tactics, and so you can kind of amp it up. And they kind of they know they get the game. When you're marketing to non-marketers, right. then um, it's really important to um, to to figure out your audience, to understand who you're talking to. Um, right, I've shared the resource as well for the lead magnet guidelines. This is how to create a lead magnet. And I'm just going to add now um, the email, writing an email promotion PDF. It shares for you how to write an email promotion. And then I'm going to add some examples. I'm going to share templates. Here we go. And then I'll share examples after that as well. Nice. Yeah. Um, that's the second one. And then handout. This is. I see we've gone over the hour and a bunch of people have dropped out now, which is kind of what you'd expect because we said we'd be yep. now. But for anybody who is still interested in this, then you are. I want to make sure you're getting um, everything you might want. Okay. And then I've got some example ones as well. So let me download one of those. Hopefully this is enough to give you kind of an idea. Like this is a ways down the road if you've got an authority site. You do not need to be writing your own email promotions yet. You need to be finding, you know, collecting email addresses and finding affiliates and using their existing emails. But uh, this will hopefully give you an idea of kind of what would look like when you get to that stage. All right, cool. I've shared all of those in the uh, handout section, so hopefully that's useful. Awesome. Uh, oh. Yes, we. Uh, okay, let's see. Do we have time for one more question, or I guess we're. Sure, I've got time. If, okay, if yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm good. Looks like we still have about 40 people on. So uh, let's see. Peter says, I can't think of any courses that would work within my website niche. And I guess, th yeah, that, that would make sense. Some niches seem like they are more geared for courses than others. Uh, but Peter asks, how can I find out if there are any courses I could make? So the way I would do it, same thing, what we've been talking about so far, Peter, I would not move to the making courses. I would go look for like, is there anybody else selling courses in that niche already? If not, um, I really would, it, then it's less likely that courses work in that niche. It doesn't mean they definitely don't, but it means that you you have a lot less certainty. If there's other people making money from something already, 
And it's like, okay, great. Other people are making money from it. I can make money from it too. So look on ClickBank, search for your niche name, you know, like, I don't know, whatever it is. Um, food, you know, food courses or dog training courses or whatever your niche is and see is anybody else selling courses in that space as well. Survey if, uh, your audience either by putting a pop-up survey on the website or if you've got an email list already, then sending out a survey to them, finding out are there problems that people have that be interested in buying a course to solve that problem and start to research it and just kind of find out. If there's nobody else selling courses, there's nothing on ClickBank, there's nothing you can find on Google, there's nothing on Udemy um, or uh, what's it called, Skillshare, and your audience says they're not interested in the survey, just maybe just leave it. Maybe this isn't the right thing for you. But if any of those things are coming back and you see people are succeeding with that, then that means that it can be worth pushing in that direction. So dog training I mentioned before. Dog training courses, people spend money in person on the courses. They're happy to spend money online as well. And um, we had a client in the dog training space who was doing great. So there's a lot of areas where where online courses can work. Mm, yeah, that's a good point. If, even if you don't see existing online courses, if you're seeing that there are more traditional in-person trainings, then that could be also a, a validation mm. for testing out an online course. Yeah, 100%. And another thing I didn't mention, actually, if you really get to that stage, there's nothing else from anybody else to sell, but you think there could be potential here, do a pre-sale. So sell it before you make it. And if nobody buys, don't make it. And if lots of people buy, then uh, then make the course. And if a few people buy, and then you decide it's not enough to make it worthwhile making. Yeah, then that, was, that was my out. question. If the one person you know? dies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. Um, let's see. I, we have one more question from Ken. A few of our highly trafficked niches, niche sites work with AdThrive, Azoic, or Mediavine. Do you find that ads may get in the way for your course sales? Yeah, so this is really, really important point. So if you've already got ads, that's how you're making money. When you start to collect email addresses, um, that might lead to a slight drop in your uh, ad revenue because you're putting the email collection in the place where some of your ads were going before. Um, hopefully you can find somewhere else it could go as a pop-up or in the sidebar or something that is not currently used by your ads so that you don't, because it's depressing, isn't it, to lose money short term in the hope of making it long term. So hopefully you can find somewhere to put the opt-in to start to grow that. Um, once you collect, start collecting emails and you're making sales and you're getting revenue coming in, you can then make a judgment of, right, actually, if I collect an email address, it's worth more money to me than the ad spaces, in which case you can start to put the email opt-in in some of the places where the ads currently are. Um, th that's what I mentioned um, Shona before. She used to have tons of ads on her site, and then she gradually cut it down as she started making more money from selling courses. She now still does have some ads, but not many. And so it's kind of a gradual process of sw swapping over. Um, you can have both, but the ads obviously will, will distract people and send people off the site and away from you. So yes, that is going to lose your course sales, but you you can't go straight to the, the end point. You have to do the whole thing gradually. I hope that explains it, Ken. Yeah, that's a good point. I'm sure people will will first think of ways to not cannibalize their sales with uh, their display ad sales and will probably want to opt for like a like a pop-up or something to try to get the best of both worlds. But but maybe it, it sounds like the, the best option is just to maybe not do that and just phase out gradually from display ads, uh, just replacing your... Uh, those sections with your with an opt-in yeah okay great well uh i know we're 10 minutes past the hour so i'll wrap this up here uh well john thanks so much man for for joining and yes everyone will receive uh i think we'll receive an automated email with this recording and if it doesn't include the handouts then uh i've downloaded those as well and we'll we'll get those over to you as well Sweet. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much for coming on. Really appreciate it. It's been really fun um, explaining all this stuff. I hope that for those of you who um, decide this is right for you, that you make a ton more money. Drop us an email when you're rich, and uh, and um, I will I will cheer you on. If you want help, we're here to help with this kind of stuff. Uh, you can drop me an email, john at datadrivenmarketing.co. But the first thing to do is go to pimpyourfunnel.com, fill it out, and then um, we'll kind of figure out if we're right. For yep. You. Thank Thanks, you, everybody. Guys. Have a great day. Thanks, John.